Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Trey, and let's talk about X Men '97. Refuse to be stupid, X Men style. Because as you guys know, Marvel decided that they're going to bring back uh, the sequel to the X Men: The Animated Series, but it's going to be called Marvel Studios X Men '1997 or '97, however you want to goddamn call it. <laughs> and I'm already wary about it anyway, but. Let's talk about what they said. What they said, um, the Disney head writer hints Disney Plus series will reflect modern issues. The world is very different place than um, than when the original was first made. I'm sorry, you moron. Because let's let's already talk about how the writer's stupid as fuck. It's called X Men '97. You dumb bitch. Not. X-Men 2022. If we wanted a damn reflection of the real world, it should have been called X-Men 2022. But no, it's called X-Men 90, um, 97. So therefore, you need to be reflecting the world of 1997, not 2022, you dumb bitch. Like, my God. Like Eric July said, dead on arrival. Because y'all do dumb shit. No, you don't need to reflect the modern world because the modern world is different than 1997. What is appropriate in 1997 might not be appropriate today. Or what is uh, um, acceptable today is not acceptable in 1997. So no, you cannot have it reflect the real world, you dumb. Like, my God, how damn stupid are we being right now? Like, it's already doomed. It is doomed already. Ah, Jesus Christ. Um, so basically, um, DeBeo provided this hint at the X-Band 97 planned direction during a recent discussion with the direct writer, um, writer, writer Russell Mahinen regards on very ways in which the fan favorite incarnation of the Marvel Super Team return to the small screen will differ from their initial outing. It doesn't need to. It can't be a damn sequel series. It's If it's supposed to be a sequel series, it's supposed to pick up after the original series left off. You don't need to make that, no damn changes. All you need to do is make, all you need to do is make animation changes because the last season of X-Men, wow, wow, the animation style was trash. If you make sure that you can go back to the original animation style and make it look like the actual 90s comics, you got something going on. The only and then the only other thing is if you're adding characters that we haven't seen in a while, like Psych, um, like um Psylocke, like Angel, like Iceman, like Nightcrawler, like um Colossus, like um Marrow, those are characters you can add. Those are additions that you can add. Not whatever the fuck you trying to do. Because nobody cares about you trying to put today's modern sensibilities in a damn show that was made in the 90s. Do you not understand the reason why a lot of these damn shows are very remembered to this day is because they didn't talk down to people. They didn't try to stick, stick it to people. They didn't try to be like, oh, well, we need to make sure that we change things for sensibility. No, it was here. Here's a story. Here's a story with these X-Men characters. And we're going to make a story. And that's it. That's it. They're not trying to preach to us about stuff in a way that you guys are. Because you're going to try to talk about LGBT rights. You're going to try to talk about racism. You're going to talk about women and sexism and all that bullshit that nobody give a damn about. Because half that stuff is irrelevant. Especially when the mutants already got other shit to go on. They're already a diverse team who have powers and the world already fears them. Like they're already diverse. They already got their own issues. Here y'all go with that bullshit that y'all gonna try to add to it. Because we know that's what you're gonna do. Um, the Mayo, the Mayo, um, opened up his talk with uh, Mahaney by clarifying that though he, um, he and his team plan to make changes to the show, one aspect they want to carry on from the original is the earnest of his characters, particular in how their emotions are full display. So basically, they're going to be sitting down, sitting and talking, talking and sitting, sitting and talking, and crying and talking about feelings more so than anything else. My Jesus Lord, what the hell? 
for me, it made sense once I met Julia um, and Eric. Um, Lee, um, Lee Ware and Larry Houston, who were the creators and the directors of the original series, who are literally the best people you can possibly know, um, could possibly imagine, as they are so earnest and sincere as people. Yeah, because they knew how to tell good stories. Like I said, another thing too is this what you need to be doing, you need to be displaying stories from the 90s era. So, X Men from all the way to X Men issue number one from the 1991 era all the way to 2001 that is what you need to be doing not whatever the fuck you trying to do now you get what i'm saying so and he, he also added when you watch the series i think i think we all remember it's such an earnest of all the characters everyone's emotions are on full display everyone is sincere and it's just like wow you meet the leeways and larry and it's just like oh wow i totally get it um to to that end, um, the Mayo revealed that Mahini, um, his philosopher towards the revival production, explained it. I think the challenge to me was honoring that earnest, that emotional sincerity in um, the show where it wasn't about the big bad of the day. That was almost, in some cases, an afterthought, the writer recalled. It was really about the relationship of this found family and how they cared about each other and had disagreements. Okay. He further noted, and as I always just come back whenever we're talking in the writer's room or talking um, to the directors, it's just like we have the earnest emotions in every scene because I really do think that that's the secret sauce to the original series. No, the secret sauce was they took fucking stories from the 90s comic book and adapted as accurately as possible, but also while not trying to talk down to the audience that's that's a secret sauce you made they made it entertaining that's what they did yes the emotions were there but they made sure that the people were real that's the thing about it you guys don't know how to make anything real because you come off it comes off fake you're trying to change something to pander to people that nobody asked you to do no one asked you at all Building upon the apparent focus of emotion when asked by Mahini how X-Men 97 may approve, approve or differ from the original one, the writer asserted, I don't know if improve would be a word I would use. I think the show is amazing um, in so many different ways, the Mayo um, opted. I think that I think what I would say is that the generation who grew up watching the show, we have grown up and the world is very different place when the show was first made. It is, but that doesn't mean that we don't like we don't like what the show was doing. You get what I'm saying? Like you guys always trying to go on our nostalgia and bring shows back from our childhood, but then you want to try to change it for modern sensibilities and then get mad when we, you know, get upset because it's dumb. Don't don't even touch the series if you're not going to do it right. Don't even touch the damn series if you're not even going to do it right. Because, see, I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to use the excuse that the people who watch the show wouldn't understand the show, to, um, wouldn't, wouldn't watch the show today if we don't make it changes to today's sensibilities. No. No. Stop that. Please. I beg. Please. I beg. Dang. Okay, and so it's more a question of what does the show look like knowing what we do now, and it looks like in today's world with everything that has changed and everything that hasn't changed, sadly, in our world, this is where I believe my focus has been um, in storytelling, and he's um, and has really been that. Oh, Lord have mercy. Um, though that some might argue Malini's comments do not lend themselves to any specific uh, narrative bent, the outspoken opinions of numbers shows production team may provide some clues. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so they're, they're, they're just talking about it. I'm not about to read all this, all this bullshit that they talking about. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, I really don't know how this is going to work to be honest, but Hey, this is what they want to do. I think it's going to be a dumb kind of thing. But what you need to be doing is, you need to be doing is, how about tell stories like Fatal Attraction? That's what you can do. That's another, that's a cool storyline. Then we have X-Men Alpha. That was a, that's another cool um, storyline that we can also, we can also agree on for, 
like these are these are stories that that, that could be definitely be adapted if you wanted to um x-men alpha which is like an alternate take well where you know apocalypse took over so we get to pick up where here's the x-men in this new world or something like that because apocalypse was a major threat so let's f maybe we can do like maybe a five-parter like we did with the dark phoenix and actually adapt x-men alpha that could be something cool um the uncanny x-men um we can do the dark horizon where it's the return of juggernaut and it's up to like um gene gray gene gray to stop um the juggernaut while leading up to the events of onslaught which another thing that you can also do is onslaught that's another one you can do um What's another one you can you can do? You can do um, the fallout of X Force, which is what Siren lost in silence. That could be something really cool to adapt. You can do the Uncanny X Men Palladian Convict. That's another cool out uh, one. The I think we already did the ties that bind right where Jean Grey and yeah Jean Grey and Scott actually got married. So that yeah we already did that one. Um, a son's pain that could be really cool because that could be relativity um this one has um focus on Iceman and um let's see i think it's i think it is it, basically where Iceman is dealing with his father being beaten when um creighton creed finds out that Iceman's father is you know the father of Iceman, which you know suffers to his beating that could be really cool kind of thing and it's a good father son kind of story uh you can do a deadly homecoming you can also let's see what's another one you can also do you can do um open hand and closed fist that was another cool story i'm just kind of giving some like little story that they could use because you know come on now you can't expect you can't expect people to not like these are things that you you could do let's see you could do magneto war that could be another cool cool thing right there as well we haven't seen that one um hazardous team we can do the what was it what's it called the executioner song storyline we haven't did i know they haven't did that one these are like these are stories that you kind of want to do this these are the kind of stories that you want to do if you want to oh and there's a cool one called um x-men 28 and i believe that one was like where Jean gray was in the mansion by herself um and Sabretooth came and you can like literally show Jean gray and Sabretooth fought fighting and then you can do re uh, revelations where we get to find out the origins of Be um betsy braddock you know psylocke and kwan that's another cool storyline to read um what's another one that that they haven't done i'm trying to see if there's another one that ha they haven't did oh yeah x babies that was a look that could be a little cute little story out of nowhere <laughs> um we can do we can do bishop's convert some more bishop ain't going the agony of memory of course the onslaught series because why not we can do we can do this one storyline issue where it has Gambit versus Magneto. That was another cool storyline. Oh my god, I haven't seen that costume in a long time from Storm. We'll see. What's another one? What's another cool storyline? Oh, the return of Iceman. That could be a good that could be a cool, cool storyline to really do where Iceman had took a leave of absence from the X-Men and then came back. And had to prove himself. And then there's a good, cool storyline between Wolverine and Marin that you can also do as well. You can do the um, the Day of Purgatory where Warren and Nero team up. These are just like cool storylines that you can that you can do. I'm not about to I'm not about to list all of the storylines that they haven't done yet. But what I'm saying is this is the kind of this is what you need to be focusing on. Not oh well we need to make sure that we're reflecting today's world. No, you don't. No, you really don't. It's in the 90s. Keep it in the 90s. Just make sure you tell good storylines. 
have storylines that are based on the X-Men of that era. That's what you need to do. Make sure the, the iconic costumes are there. Make sure you tell good classic X-Men stories without all of the nonsense. You, if It feels like you guys like to set yourself up for failure for no reason. For no reason. And then expect us to be like, yep, this makes sense. No, it doesn't. It doesn't make the sense God gave. It's just dumb at the end of the day. Refuse to be stupid, Marvel. Refuse to be stupid. But it is what it is. I don't know if I'm going to watch it. I might watch the first episode. And if the first episode come out with some bullshit, if that animation is fucked up, I'm out. I can already tell you that. But, yeah, those are my thoughts. Tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.